P.J. Armstrong, three on two break. He's got Horton for the bucket. That is the playmaker of the future for Iowa, P.J. Armstrong. Coach Raveling um, was really my initial introduction, um, recruiting this young kid from Detroit. And uh, he was the first one. And I, re I remember in our, when he came to visit, the first thing he said was, you're going to love the people there. And it's, it's going to be like nothing else you've ever experienced. And uh, he was so right. And uh, he just he spoke so highly about the people, about the fans, uh, about the support that you would have. But most importantly, he talked about how great of an institution the University of Iowa was. So um, I think he undersold it. When I, when I came here, literally, it was just, I felt like this was the place for me. There was no other place for me to visit. And uh, one of the best decisions I've ever made was, you know, choosing the University of Iowa. Iowa pulls it up court. And Marble. I remember Roy called me and asked me, he said, hey, what are you doing? And I was like, well, I, I think I want to go to the University of Iowa. He was like, you know what? I'm going to check it out too. And, um, and he ended up coming. So that was great that I had familiar faces here. I knew Bill playing against Bill in the Detroit area. But um, you know, once we all got up here, it was just a terrific time. We had guys from the Detroit area, but all the other players the, that I was able to meet and and you know they really welcomed me with open arms, so it was a, it was really a family-like situation. Marble on the cross court feed Armstrong from deep, three-point shot. We had great leadership from the get-go, right? Um, you know, Kevin Gamble, Brad Lojas, Gary Wright. Those were our that was our foundation. Those guys were 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 excellent at what they did for us, and that team worked for us. Um, so we started there, and then everything else kind of fell into place. Um, you know, we had great role players. Uh, we had young players. You know, Coach Davis was, you know, he had a new style of play and instilled confidence with us in how we're going to play that year. I think that was the first year, the three-point shot, it was being introduced in college basketball, and we were going to play different and how we were going to implement that. Um, and we had a new defensive scheme, right? We were a pressing team, a full court team, and Coach Davis was going to use every player. I mean, he was substituting guys, and so there was no excuse for us not to play hard. And uh, we were just out all at the right, I think, right space in our life um, for being a good team. And um, but I can't stress enough about the leadership that we had because we really did. And, and, you know, as much as you talk about the players and, the, and we took the responsibility, you know, Coach Davis and his staff and what they were able to do when he came in, I mean, he just, he gave us the confidence. And I think that's what every coach, you know, strives to do is to instill confidence in the players and be able to coach the players, but also be able to encourage them to go out there and play hard and do what they do. And um, so we had a great balance that year. I start in wrestling. Yeah. Uh, wrestling kind of runs in the family a little bit. My mom, two of her brothers wrestled, and one wrestled here in college when he was you know, 20, 21, 22. I was three, four, five. But, I mean, I still vividly remember going to uh, you know, different places all around the country watching my uncle wrestle. It just became something that we would do around the house. Was I would wrestle with my dad, brother, uncles, so then when I was old enough, you know, I started wrestling and uh, kind of became my favorite sport pretty quickly. Coaches reached out to me, wanted me to, I mean, at least come look at the school. So I came and I knew right away I wanted to be here. I mean, I probably didn't even need to come on a visit. I would have, I would have been here. John Keegan Shaw is a very unique fellow. He is intelligence and IQ off the charts. He's street smart. He has humor. He can interact. But he also can be sitting in the corner. You don't know he's there, but he's taking it all in. He's got a big smirk on his face. So he's a, he's a popular guy. He's also a TA, teacher's assistant. And what... I mean, who does that? Looks like we're still missing a couple, um, but we'll get going for today. So I came in with a lot of college credits, 
And so what I decided to do was I graduated after my third year. I'm about to finish my third semester of my uh, master's finance degree. The Fed does that to encourage banks to use the Fed as a lender of last resort. So I'm a teaching assistant for uh, macroeconomics, three discussion sections a week. Uh, any questions on- You know, it's been good. Uh, definitely at the beginning it was challenging. That's been a learning curve, you know, kind of seeing what how kids respond to different methods and such, so. The Heartland is brought to you by U.S. Cellular. Avoid breakdowns in coverage with U.S. Cellular. hy V, where there's a helpful smile in every aisle. hy V proudly supports the Iowa Hawkeyes. You know, I didn't know if I'd ever get into the lineup or you know, even put on an Iowa singlet, but uh, I remember we were having a team meeting and Terry came up to me and asked me what my weight was. I had no idea why he had asked me, and then I realized that, uh, you know, Bowman wasn't planning on going that week, and we didn't really have anyone else at 74. Uh, it was either give me an opportunity or forfeit the weight, and, you know, I wasn't going to let that opportunity go to waste. Mitch Bowman not getting the nod tonight. All right, here comes Keegan Shaw. We needed him. He stepped in, and he had success. And a lot of times when you need guys and they step in, it's like just to fill the weight and hope that they can hold their own so the bonus points don't get too far out of hand. Hey, just manage the weight class, stud. And with him, it was, he puts his signature on it, let's put it that way. Shaw gets his legs back, comes all the way around, in on a shot of his own, then it gets a two-point takedown. Great wrestling right there by Keegan Shaw. And I just really think I was really ready to go. You know, I've been waiting for that opportunity for for so long that when it finally came, you know, I was I was so ready to go. Three shot and oh! a pancake go behind for two. <laughs> Keegan Shaw whipped him, hit a whip over so hard. I won that match and then, you know, two days later I gotta go wrestle Johnny Sebastian at Northwestern. Johnny Sebastian's a tough opponent. It's almost like a David versus Goliath is how I kind of looked at it. You know, he's big, he's two weights above me, he's big for the weight. I'm like a 157 pounder, I'm going 74. You know, he's this top 20 ranked guy and I'm third or fourth string guy down there two weights. Gets behind him, he's got Pick to him up, put him down. down. Pick him up. Two. Does. Yes. I remember I just looked at the corner and Terry just pointed at me. And, you know, I could see it in his face that, you know, I was out there to battle. And I, I knew in my head that I was gonna win that match right at that point. You know, that's all I needed was that that finger. And Keegan Shaw with a point four writing time is going to win 11 to 6. <laughs> that's a big win for Keegan Shaw. Next week I had Nebraska, so I would have wrestled uh, Mikey Labriola. I think he was a top 10 guy at that time, All-American last year. You know, that was a big duel. And at the time of his match, that dual meet didn't start uh, at 125. So er, that was early in the duel. First period, you know, I wrestled tough, not great, but tough. Uh, second period, I go out there and I sustained a major injury. Shaw able to fight off that shot. Uh -oh. Oh. oh, he gets taken down, but that He's knee. Hurt. Yeah, Shaw's not, boy, it is hurt bad. Jeez. In, in his match, in that particular match, you know, he had to stay out there. He couldn't just walk off the mat. And so again, he sucked it up for the team. Um, testament to who he is, where he's come from. Unfortunately, you know, that ended my season and it's kind of made it tough for me to have a good end to my career. Uh, but I'm kind of getting back on the mat and I'd like to get, you know, another opportunity to represent the University of Iowa, put that singlet on. Um, one thing that I always tell myself is, you know, know your role, do your job. You know, my role is not to be starter right now, but I've got a job to do. I got to make those guys better. You know, if this is going to be a national championship contender team, then it's got to be more than just 10 guys out there. You know, you get drafted, you kind of, you dream and you hope that you have an opportunity. And, and um, I never knew whether or not I was good enough to play, I always thought in my mind that I was good enough. But to finally reach that dream and have an opportunity was really a dream for me. And it was one that I was gonna make the best of. And um, I never thought 
I would play as long as I played. I never imagined that I would win one championship, let alone three. Uh, and uh, to play in an incredible city like Chicago and uh, with a few good players, you know, Michael Jordan being one and Scottie Pippen and, and the gang playing for Phil Jackson. Um, it was quite a treat. I never imagined that I would be the Grand Marshal when I stepped foot on campus 30 years ago, right? I mean, but here I am doing anything I can. And like I said, this, this Iowa means everything to me. And um, I, I just, when they called, I was, I was really shocked. I, I thought it was a joke at first. I was like, yeah, whatever, you know, you gotta be important to be the Grand Marshal. And um, like I said, I always just look at myself as just a kid from Detroit. And, um, but here I am. And uh, I'm very happy. It's, I've had a smile on my face ever since I walked on campus, so. It was great. And uh, what an incredible facility uh, the Children's Hospital is over there. And um, I'm just amazed about, you know, what they do, uh, the work that's done there, but more importantly, uh, what they do for, for all those kids. And uh, in the end, yes, it's a beautiful facility, but you can't ever forget you know the purpose and you see the people there and all the people that put their their life their energy and their their, their soul into their work so and uh, we all benefit from that and it's just a great great facility and I'm very happy that they took the time to show me around and meet some of the kids there and be able to visit with the kids at the uh, at the facility been able to come back with my wife and um, just walking around and seeing the new buildings and the new structures and the new traditions and it's just great. And you're seeing old faces, familiar faces. And, uh, but the one thing that hasn't changed has been the people. And uh, I was just in the elevator earlier today and uh, with two women who I just saw and I said, you know what? You know, I, I currently live in L.A. now, but that hasn't changed. People are still smiling, people are still friendly, people are very helpful, and that's what attracted me here to Iowa in the first place. So, yes, there has been a lot of change, but the people haven't changed, and uh, that's been great to see. Joined by his wife, Sonia, please welcome B.J. Armstrong, our 2019 homecoming Grand Marshal. The Heartland is brought to you by Mediacom. Today's broadcast is powered by Extreme. Feel the power of amazingly fast internet up to one gig. University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. The Chalk showing blitz. Are they coming? Here they come. Gabbert sack. Big time sack off the edge. Well, I guess it looked like a, uh, a blitz, but it was Amani oh, Jones, Jones, who's now a converted defensive end, but he's still got that linebacker speed. And he flings Gabbert to the floor. A big loss, and it's going to be fourth down, fourth and nearly 20. Stanley to throw. Goes to the end zone. Lobs it to the far corner. It is caught. Touchdown, touchdown, Brandon Smith. A great grab. My, oh, my, right over the top of that defensive cornerback. Got his hands up over his the defensive back. John back. Reed. But Stanley put it up there and told the big fella to go get it. One setback, that's Goodson. Now the tight end, Weeding, comes in motion, stops. Here's the snap to Stanley. They give it to Goodson, trying to get to the outside. Turns the corner. 10, 5, first down, fighting for the goal line. He's over. Touchdown, Iowa. I'm going to tell you, that was the best run of the season right there. He was trapped, but his speed, he got outside and then bulldozed into the end zone. And now backs up four yards in that pistol. Got two backs there. Takes to one of them. Here's a quick slant. The uh, wide receiver screen. First down inside the 10 at the 8-yard line of the Hawkeye. Oh, the ball. Ball is out. The ball pops out. Hawks are saying they have it. Dino Stone was in the middle of all that. For the Hawkeyes, three receivers to the wide side. Stanley on the fake draw. Blitz coming. And Nate 
wrestles himself away from the would-be sacker, throws downfield, has a man open, caught! One of the outstanding plays of the year by Nate Stanley, just to not go down. And he just couldn't wrestle him to the ground, and Nate just kept spinning, and then makes this great throw. And here's the snap, the spot, the kick is on the way, and it is right through. Here's the snap, and right through. This from 42 yards. Here's the snap, rest center holds. Keith has it going the right way. It'll be a 39-yard field goal attempt. Let's see if he can keep the string going. Here's the snap, the kick is on the way. It's long enough, it is good. Early on in the second half, third quarter, 12-13 to play. Plummer back to throw again. Lobs it short, picked off, intercepted. Intercepted by Riley Moss, intended for David Bell, and Riley Moss made a spectacular break on the ball. Just taking that deep outside, stepped right in front of Bell and made the play. Hawks are at midfield after stopping Northwestern on downs. They run a late corner blitz, pass caught. First down, Tyrone Tracy gets to the far sideline, needs a blocker, turns it upfield, 20, 15, 10, 5, and touchdown! Touchdown, Iowa! Tracy was hit and drilled after a first down gain of about 12, bounced off the uh, safety and kept motoring to the far sideline. No score, early first period. Here comes the reverse to Amir smith Marset. He's got Stanley out in front of him. He gets a great block. He turns downfield. I don't think they're going to catch him. Touchdown! Touchdown, Iowa! Chance for a return from his own five. 10, 15, 20. Reverses motion, gets the corner turn. He's at the 30. He's at the 40. Midfield, 50. 45, 40. 35, 30. 25, 20. It's going to be a touchdown! Five sacks on the day. Morgan, he's a cool customer. Now, he and Rodney Smith are having a long conversation. Clock running. He's back to pass. And down he goes. A.J. Epinesa poured through there like a runaway freight train and bowls over the quarterback, Morgan. Now, Sleep Dalton is back at his 25 and sends the kick toward the right sideline, fair caught at the 20, fumbled, and that'll be... Hawk has it, that's it. The Hawks oh have my it. goodness, the Hawks have it. and the Hawkeyes get on it. Terry Roberts was down there, but he did not get in the receiver's way. The Hawks are going to win it, 18 to 17. So here's for the win. Duncan from 47 yards. Here's the snap. The boot is on the way. It is good! Good! Keith Duncan, wearing Babe Ruth's number, has just hit it out of the park. Oh, oh I, I'm telling you, I'm, I need more blood pressure pills. All, <laughs> oh, my goodness. What is this young man? Latham High Tech Seeds is proud to partner with the Iowa men's basketball team by raising money for every free throw made by the Hawks all season long through the Hawkeye Charity Stripe promotion. All proceeds will benefit the American Cancer Society and Coaches versus Cancer program right here in the state of Iowa. Latham High Tech Seeds, cheering on the Hawkeyes from the free throw line and helping with cancer awareness efforts all across the state of Iowa.